You love me. You really love me. This was Jim Carrey's The Mask. Why aren't you screwing with my mind? Maybe I am just going crazy. Maybe I am just going. And this is the pseudo sequel completed without Carrie, Son of the Mask. Excuse me, gentlemen. Pet Detective. This was the 1994 film Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Who are you? Ace Ventura Darrow Hudge Jr. Esquire. I represent the defendant. And this was the 2009 atrocity Ace Ventura Jr. We could go on, but we'll refrain. In this modern age of cinema where the idea of the movie star has largely gone the way of the dodo, it's easy to forget the importance of star power at the center of a film that can often take a mediocre work on paper and elevate it to greatness. Perhaps no career embodies that power more than Jim Carrey. Carrey's movie career built franchises through his anarchic comedic persona, but when studios tried to revisit his iconic films without him, his absence would sink the project, proving him to be completely irreplaceable. It is good to see what someone with real talent can do when great opportunities are given to them instead of me. Jim Carrey's career began during the stand-up comedy explosion of the late 70s through the 80s. He worked his way through stand-up clubs, honing his act which contained numerous impressions of pop culture figures. His work gained the attention of the legendary Rodney Dangerfield, who often had Carrey perform as his opening act. Carrie's career would enter its next major phase when he booked a regular cast member role on the hit sketch comedy series In Living Color, and this show would become the launching pad for the most important year of Carrie's career. In February of 1994, Jim Carrey appeared in his first starring role, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. With Carrie's star power completely unproven, the expectations for the film's box office earnings were extremely low. This made it all the more shocking when the movie raked in a whopping $107.2 million on only a $15 million budget. You've done some fine detective work, Ace. Could you speak into my good ear? I thought I heard you call me Ace. In July of that same year, The Mask debuted and, buoyed by the popularity of Ace Ventura, the film raked in $350 million worldwide. For perspective, this made The Mask the second most financially successful comic book movie of all time, just behind Tim Burton's Batman. Those back-to-back -back successes would be enough to launch any actor to the Hollywood stardom stratosphere. Somebody stop me! But the run didn't end there. In December, Carey closed the year out with one final mega hit, Dumb and Dumber, grossing $247 million worldwide. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you totally redeem yourself! With all these massive hits to his name, it's obvious that Hollywood would demand sequels to these proven beloved classics. However, Carey has largely avoided them for most of his career. Currently, he has only appeared in four sequels. The reason for that lies in part with the production of Ace Ventura 2. The sequel was rushed into production at the same time that Carrie was experiencing his meteoric rise to stardom, with the pressures to meet high expectations as well as numerous behind-the-scenes disagreements and production issues, the experience seemed to sour Carrie's entire perspective on any future potential sequels. On the topic, Carrie is quoted as saying, I find sequels are a function of commerce for the most part, at least the two I've done. They were characters I enjoyed doing, but I did find myself almost parroting myself at that point. For Carey, his success meant sequels were never really a necessity, and he understandably felt that many of them were an inevitable case of diminishing returns from the success of the original films. I'm not a, I'm not a crazy sequel guy. There have been four attempts to revitalize a Jim Carrey comedy without Carey's involvement. The first was 2003's Dumb and Dumber-er When Harry Met Lloyd, a prequel to the original Dumb and Dumber that shares the origin of Harry and Lloyd's friendship. Stepping into Carrie's shoes as Lloyd Christmas is Eric Christian Olsen, who has the unenviable task of trying to match Carrie's comedic energy. Besides having a plain, unfunny script, the entire movie feels like a bunch of kids doing a series of impressions of their favorite movie rather than a genuine performance. It's a role that truly sets up any actor for failure because anyone can make an impression, but Carrie's ability to surprise and entertain is truly impossible to replicate. Did you at least enjoy yourself? No, it was a complete waste of time. Fortunately, one lesson was learned from this failure. Don't expect anyone to play one of Carrie's iconic characters. 
The future Carrie sequel attempts did not bother to ask anyone to attempt to be Jim Carrey, but they still expected them to carry on films that he made iconic, inevitably inviting comparisons. In the films Ace Ventura Jr. and Son of the Mask both make the material much more family-friendly, and in the process provide a watered-down version of what was once a potent comedic brew. While there are certainly aspects of those original films that should be left in the past, these two films don't come anywhere near achieving the comedic heights as the original by being for kids. This is the crappiest piece of crap in crap town. Even attempting to replace Jim Carrey with another beloved comedy icon in the film, Evan Almighty, proved to be an exercise in futility. While Steve Carell is certainly a beloved comedic actor, he doesn't have the same megawatt star power that Carrey had at his peak. Giving him a script that is more family-friendly once again took away what little comedic edge there was from the original film. Beyond their creative failures, all of these failed follow-ups had paltry financial earnings, especially compared to the box office juggernauts of Carrie's 1994 run. That's just cruel. Do you see him? I don't see him. All of this proves that the true IP power of these films was never the ideas or the characters. It was Carrie all along. Even Jim Carrey himself ultimately could not fully replicate his own success. 2014's Dumb and Dumber 2 was nowhere near the hit the original film was. The movie reunites both Carrey and co-star Jeff Daniels, as well as the original writers and directors, the Farley brothers. But the comedic style that was once so shocking and unexpected to audiences had become stale. The film feels like a once great band struggling to perform their greatest hits. As Carrey himself predicted, these actors were unable to recapture the magic that made the original film great. Audiences had changed and evolved, but the comedy of Dumb and Dumber 2 stayed the same. Wouldn't have been funny if I stopped too soon. Comedy is all about timing here. Nowadays, Carrey, like most film actors, balances a variety of projects from indie films to prestige auteur television to mega franchise blockbusters, but does not diminish the fact that his name still holds value and any attempt to revive the brands he built won't be as successful without his name attached. Even when he is part of a franchise, like his role as Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog, the appeal of him returning to an over-the-top comedic role has doubtless been a factor in the success of both Sonic films. The reality is, I surpassed everything you're ever going to do! Although the world of film has changed, nothing can change the power of Carrie's film persona. The films needed him more than he needed the films, and that, more than anything, is the true sign of a movie star. What do you think? Is the death of the movie star greatly exaggerated? Or is Carrie one of the last of a dying breed of actor? Let us know what you think, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Nerdstalgic.